biggest squash event in Dublin and in Ireland. Closely followed by the West of Ireland Open in Galway, which was held last week. That's only a PSA event, so only a men's event though. So none of the female players would have played over in Galway. Of course, we do have the men's final coming up afterwards, which will be between Alan Klein of Scotland and Adrian Waller of England, which promises to be a very tough and tight match, judging by the way both players have played throughout this tournament. So as referees, we have, I think his name is John Ashton and John Massarella. Might have got the first name wrong. Anyway, Gohar of Egypt to serve from the right. Kipak's receiving on the left. Off we go. seen that this tournament of Kipax. Not something you see often by professional players. Easy mistake, Kipax just getting into the swing of things. On the other hand, is a good starter. Haven't really seen a fall behind throughout the whole tournament. We'll see if Kipex can do that. And see how the young Egyptian reacts when she's put under pressure. doing. Not attacking with enough conviction there. The Egyptian, as I mentioned, is very fast. When she gets on the ball, she really pounces on it. opinion. A slight confusion there. Referee initially saying it was 5-1, but then correcting himself that it's hand out. I thought the ball clipped the tin, at least it made that sound, but the referee disagrees, so 2-4. You can hear a sound through the crowd. But go hard. Hit that cross-court nick attempt with great conviction. An incredibly hard hitter. Her ball. <laughs> 
Let's go out getting lucky there. That ball just hitting the back wall, Nick. Just taking a good start to this match. Squeeze the ball off that side wall. Obstruction there. Kipak's not quite happy with Goha running into her back, but the young Egyptian quick to apologize. What a good player she is there. Great pick up initially. Hangs in the rally and then finishes up beautifully with a perfect kill shot. up in this ladies final here, winning the first game comfortably 
don't feel like Apex will be too happy with the way that first game went. Made a couple of easy mistakes. Didn't really... Wasn't able to keep the game tight enough. So Goha at this point still hasn't dropped a game. But I'm sure the young English woman will come out with a plan. Don't know if she's being coached in between. Nuran Goha is being coached by her countrywoman Yathrib Adel, the current British Junior Open champion, whom Nuran Goha beat though on the way to this final. The tournament MC Damien O'Reilly was saying that Nuran Goha normally travels with her mother to tournaments, with her only being 16 years of age, but she's here by herself or with her compatriot Yathra Badel. I've only seen them together here in this club, so they seem to be good friends. They're from the same club back home in Egypt, though Yathra Badel is studying in Millfield at the moment, where she enjoys the training from. Jonah Barrington, amongst other people. Jonah Barrington, by the way, former winner of this Irish Open title. I think he won it several times back in the 70s. Would have been on this very court as well, the show court of Fitzwilliam Lawn Tennis Club, where we've seen plenty of great finals over the years. And let's see if this one will go down as a great final. We have had Egyptian success here in 2011. Nur El Tayeb took the title in the longest recorded women's match, beating Jacqueline Hawkes of New Zealand in five games in one hour and 50. Nur and Goha is starting off where she left off. With some hard, crisp winners. once in a while. news because the ball has not come down, it stayed up somewhere in the lighting, so the players will have to warm up the ball again, which shouldn't take long with Nura and Goha, where the ball's ready to go after two shots of hers. for Egyptian squash, or for Egyptian squash fans, with Nuran Goha playing in the finals here. Over in Zurich at the Grasshopper Cup, we have Tarek Momen taking on James Wilstrop, and the maestro Amr Shabana playing the Spanish number one and five in the world, Borja Golan. Right now, chances are good that Nur and Goha can kickstart a winning day for Egypt. But let's not speak too soon. Sometimes a ball going amiss 
can just be the change that you need as a player. Although it does look fairly bouncy and when I talked to Noura and Goha earlier this week, she said she likes bouncy chords. You can see why, because she just gets even harder to play with the way she hits the ball. So it's two wall, second game, get back to serve with a new ball now. And that's the third mistake of Gohas in a row. forehand. Probably hits the ball harder than some men that we've seen in this tournament. And that with 16 years of age. Sarah Capax. Who remains in the lead, learn the lead. 4 3. play there by Kipax, better than in the first game. And that's mistake number four or five, five. We haven't seen this yesterday. Nuran Goha making a couple of mistakes in a row, but not quite as many. Mistake number six. can expect that with the type of game that Goha plays, that she will make mistakes. It's not exactly a low percentage game, but not that many. And this is the first time that we've seen Nur and Goha. Not leading. Let's see how she reacts to this. Great pick up there by Kipax. Not quite sure what she was complaining about. She's just saying here that the referee called the shot before Goha played the shot, so she thinks a let should be played. Referee saying that he didn't actually call the ball. And 
the ball. Get back to have done better to actually play that shot. Go I was well out of position. enjoying this match so far. That being played, 5-7. That's a great drop shot by Kibax. Kibax comes to this tournament having won the Court Care Open in England last week. $15,000 tournament, beating Sarah Jane Perry, I think, in the final. to go for that cross court kill. Not perfect, the ball jumping out slightly, but Kipex can't quite get to it. 7 game ball. So this would be Goha's first drop game if she loses this. But she's not giving up. 8-10. Forcing the mistake out of Kipaks there.
So Kipax taking that second game, 11A. Games are leveled at one all. Kipax played better there though. Goha, of course, own downfall with seven or eight mistakes. Kipax very rarely scoring a point herself. But playing very steadily, forcing some mistakes out of her opponent. Retrieving well. It's a very nice mover. So it'll be interesting now to see how Nuran Goha reacts to this first drop game. So this third game will be crucially important. The crowd here really enjoying this clash of styles. Probably astounded by the fact that they're watching a 16-year-old player who isn't even the world's best under-19 player, but certainly one of them. In the crowd, as I mentioned before, loads of people who we know from Irish squash, Owen Ryan, one of the Irish coaches around here, has a great setup in Sutton with hundreds of juniors. Irish squash legend, Derek Ryan. Amongst other people working for Irish squash or involved in Irish squash tournament here, run on a volunteer basis. Here in Fitzwilliam Lawn Tennis Club in the heart of Dublin, where this tournament is held annually. Players back on court. Don't forget, up next we still have the men's final coming between Adrian Boller of England and Alan Klein of Scotland. And while here we have two players of very different ages and different styles of play. In the next match we have two players of greatly different height. Waller, one of the tallest players on tour with six foot three. Towering Klein, who is five foot eight I believe. Five foot nine. Anyway, back to this game. Start with a nice exchange there at the front court, but Goha with another mistake. take out of her opponent there with a nice tight drop shot. So go on the back foot here for the first time. That's a good play by Kipax. Just cut out mistakes on her side. And he was awarded a let there. Decision three, love.
Some great retrieving there by Kip Axon. Ending the rally with a cross court that finds the nick in the back court. Good rally there by Kip Axon. that girl has a ball the front court wasn't up. Referee's been certain that it was. Goha finally gets on the scoreboard at 1-4. That is a cracking backhand volley. Rally there by Goha. Huh? We've scored three outright winners in a row here. Thanks to her ferocious hitting. And does herself there with an easy mistake. Well, get back out of position, but then makes the easy error. saying 100% the ball was a double bounce, looking at her opponent, waiting for her to admit to it, but I couldn't quite see the ball. Kipax looked very sure of herself, but the referees didn't call it either. She gets a lucky bounce there. 6-4 to Quebec. on that ball, straightening it up nicely. off the side wall. Kipak's not happy that her opponent didn't concede that. It's a double, it's a double hit. I am surprised the referees didn't call that though, I have to say. It looked fairly obvious to me. Kipak's rightly complaining. Conceding her ball there, that's how it's done. She seemed to be saying.
miss reading that shot. This is 7 all. Tense situation now. Get back started well in this first game, but Goa has come back with some great points. There's a lovely jump by Kipax ball through the legs. The rally continues. Great improvisation and it's Goha who squeezes the point. 8-7. Kipax's perhaps just getting slightly unsettled after those two situations where she felt that Goha should have Called her shots. A nice tight drop shot there by Kipax. I said this before the side walls here, quite clingy. If you can get that ball on the side wall, you more often than not force an error out of your opponent. Great backhand drive there by Goha. Takes the lead 9 8. Straightening up nicely there, 10 8. Again, Kipak's not quite attacking positively enough. I felt she had a situation there where she just pushed the ball to the front instead of playing it with greater conviction. So 10 8, game will go on. A stroke being awarded to her there. The ball jumping into the middle. Okay decision. Kipax slightly annoyed there, I feel. Felt that decisions didn't go her way and felt that her opponent wasn't playing quite fairly there. I said at least the one ball I thought was a blatant double hit. The other one I wasn't quite sure, couldn't see him. Goha, after a bad start, four love down. We'll be really happy to have taken that game. So she's 2-1 up. It could be her, she won this, surely the biggest title of her career. She won the Czech or Prague Open a few weeks ago, beating Lucy Fialova in the finals, three love. That was a $5,000 tournament. So this one, several magnitudes bigger. Of course, one person I forgot to mention in the crowd, or I wanted to call out was... Ed Dunn, president of Irish Squash. You can see Dara Flynn here. She represented the island at over 35s and over 40s. So Goha back on court. Kipax will want to get a similarly good start she did last time. Players like Noor and Goha, if they get off to a good start, they can. They can steamroll you in a way with their power and kill shots. 
But Sarah is experienced enough to not let this happen, I feel. Played really well in the beginning of the game, but then let Goha back into it. Got slightly annoyed with her opponent and the referees. And Goha starts here with a good start. Shot there by Sarah Kopax, who needed that point. One three. the ball. Playing a nice drop shot. 4-1. Really moves well across that T-line. Volleying with great conviction. side wall. It is a bit bigger than the forehand nick on the right hand side. Quickly being awarded a lap. Good to 
decision. And that is a really good forehand drive, taking her to 7-2. Two, Quebec's not going to that ball either. Three points away from taking this game and the match for what would be her biggest title of her professional career. done that time and time again, jumping onto that ball. A beautiful post by Kipax. Three nine, last chance for the world number 22. And number two seed of this event. And that is Brilliant drop shot into aforementioned large nick. And packs is strong together. Three really good rallies here. If she would have played like that throughout the whole match, she'd be in front, I'd argue, but Goa hasn't always let her do so, but it's three rallies just showing. What a good player Sarah Capex is. But that was an incredible shot by Goha. Short cross-court kill. No one really saw that, so she's 10-5, five, five match balls up here. And Kipax ends it with a shot into the tin, so Nouran Goha of Egypt takes the title, the Cannon Kirk Holmes Irish Open 2014 title with a really, really formidable display throughout this week. I said I've rarely seen someone hit the ball as clean and as hard as she does, let alone a 16-year-old. So fully deserved. Kipax put up a good fight. I thought at the beginning of the third game at 4-love up, she might just grab that win, but Goha came back with some great shots of her own and in the end deservedly took the title. So following this match we'll now have Adrian Waller of England, the number two seed play, Alan Klein of Scotland, the number four seed, and we'll be back in a few minutes.